So, Alec, how do you feel about dead people? Well, Rigel, I revere dead people. Living people have an unhealthy obsession with the dead people. When you die, people like you more. Look at Van Gogh. Now, this is not exclusively a Western belief. In fact, Koreans in the second half of the 15th century also venerated their ancestors. Let's take a look at Sen Suk-ju. Sen Suk-ju was a high-ranking official in the Korean political ladder. He survived through a myriad of coups. Artists in the Royal Bureau of Painting painted the portrait of Sen Suk-ju in the 15th century CE in South Korea during the Joseon Dynasty. These artists made paintings that would be cherished and worshipped by their families' generations to follow. In the portrait of Sin Suk Ju, he is seen wearing leather shoes, as well as a very specific hat. These two clothing items symbolize his position in society. The portrait we see here is on a hanging scroll, made with ink and color, on silk. The painting is interesting because of the well-defined geometric lines and limited color scheme. Yes, if you notice these angular folds, they're fairly formulaic, and this is traditional among Korean high-ranking officials. These are not necessarily meant to be realistic. Instead, a standardized body was painted with idealized individual faces. Sin suk -ju, the subject, takes up the entire space of the piece, as this is a portrait and this painting is dedicated to him. In the center, we see his bright and piercing eyes amidst the dull colors of the scroll. His facial expressions represent wisdom and dignity common in the upper class of Korea. The portrait also resembles both Mongol and Ming Chinese portraits. In Sin suk -ji's robes, we see two peacocks among plants and clouds. In Ming China, birds were used to represent the rank of civic officials, much like insignia on military and police uniforms in our culture. The flamboyant peacocks, along with the gold embroidery, suggest a high ranking. The hierarchy of bird, birds mirrors the hierarchical society propelled by Confucian beliefs. The Joseon dynasty in Korea lived by the values of Neo-Confucianism, a philosophy that places emphasis on ancestor worship. The portrait is meant to guide the soul in the practice of ancestor worship. In addition, the portrait serves as the focus of ancestral rituals in death. And moving centuries, moving centuries further into 1967, we see that living people have not stopped obsessing over dead people. Speaking of people we should worship, enter Mao Zedong. Rigel, if I were Mao, my slogan would be, burn all of history. Good one. German Mao and Rup Anyan is an oil painting on canvas. Painted by Liu Xunhua. Commissioned by the Central Propaganda Department at the height of the Cultural Revolution. Although it was painted in 1967, it depicts a famous scene of Mao on the march to Anyuan coal mines in 1922, where the miners were striking. This was an important symbol to the Central Propaganda Department because the miners represented the suffering of the Chinese people before the Communist Revolution. Chairman Mao connects with the people because he is depicted in a traditional robe that adheres to Chinese tradition as opposed to Western attire. Now, although the red commonly symbolizes revolution in communist culture, the painting sports blue and purple tones to re reflect Mao's determination before the revolution. In a troubled time, Mao wanted to help those suffering. Despite being from different cultures, Chairman Mao and Ruth Anyuan and a portrait of Sin suk -ju are both meant to praise and honor civic officials. We see that Sin suk -ju's portrait, the subject is sitting comfortably with his arms crossed, typical of traditional East Asian upper class. In the painting of Mao Zedong, he is standing atop a mountain summit, ready to embark on a revolutionary quest. We see even more notable, notable differences in the painting painted almost half, half a century later. Due to Soviet influence, this iconic painting of Chairman Mao and Rup to Anyuan is an oil painting, not a traditional hanging scroll. And unlike the portrait of Sin suk -ju, Mao's portrait depicts a detailed landscape, with mountains, a cloud of mist symbolizing the heavens, and it almost seems like Mao emerges from the surroundings themselves, as if he were a god. Besides depicting traditional values, the painting also shows a transi transition to modern society. 
the telephone pole and dam are both objects that are essential components to a contemporary society. Mao is also idealized and depicted with more perspective. Light is a more important element and there are more realistic folds in Mao's gown owing to the wider range of colors used. Both of these portraits are meant to honor their subjects. While the painting of Mao is propaganda to celebrate revolutionary history and devotion to Mao Zedong, the portrait of Sin Suk Ju is meant to show that he brought honor to his family as an official. They display different cultural beliefs. However, while the former reflects Confucian beliefs about afterlife, the latter celebrates some revolutionary history and devotion to Mao. The socialist realism themes in Mao's painting stem from so Soviet Union portraits, which also served as communist propaganda. Regardless of their origin, they are much like pictures that we would post we would put on a frame with our families. You know, when I die, I want someone to remember me as Sin Suk Sison. And I want someone to remember me as Chairman Bernal en route to Brentwood. I'd like to be remembered as Veronica of Primaporta. The gold umbrella resting under Mao's right arm shows that he's willing to go through all sorts of obstacles just to help the revolution succeed. Perhaps this slogan would be, I'm with him. Make China great again. That is the best umbrella I've ever seen. Everyone says so. Trust me, folks. Just call Sean Hannity. Call Sean Hannity and ask him about the umbrella. Ask him about China. Ask him about communism. Communism is the best China. thing. Communism is the future, folks.